audio is working give me an audio check if you would uh while waiting for people to populate in i put a poll in on youtube if you're watching is there go on over and let us know what you think do are we going to close the week out higher this coming week so far we have 67 percent of the people saying no the markets will close lower this week so let's get more information in there let's see who wins this battle does the s p 500 close higher this coming week let's talk about uh the crypto exchange is going poof and people are going to be perp walk not the people that you think that the real people in the headlines that should go to jail it'll be the lower tier people nobody's going to jail that's significant uh, but people are going to jail and you're going to see more blow-ups like this happen but we're going to talk about this has happened before we we've seen this before we can go back to 2000 we can go back to uh 2007 we it's like a merry-go-round this is my third bubble i don't know how many bear markets you've i've seen this show before whether it be Waldcom, uh whether it be uh lehman whether it be bear stearns it's all about the process and the process is, is doing what it should the rising market is is calling the herd just like it should so nothing new here let's uh, also talk about obviously the futures action i don't have the screen up here let me see if that audio is coming through proper <laughs> oh my god hey daddy uh, all right hey all right that's twitch um how's the auto coming through franken good hopefully all right i don't think we need this person we just blocked them falcon okay uh you're on good i'm glad to see did you get my SMG at 39 SMG? I, I don't I don't know that symbol. Is the stock symbol? Oh, SMG. No. Uh no, I did not. Hopefully it did well for you. Danny, thank you. Paul, thank you. Falcon, really good to have you back, man. I accidentally banned Falcon when we had that porn attack a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Tim, thank you, Tim. Yoga Mac, hey. Uh, hope you're having a good Veterans Day weekend. I am. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. God bless. This country would not be this country without you. Trader Isaac, hey, Bob, less than two hours until Yellowstone. Yeah, and then I saw the, um, actually, I'm thinking about the Sylvester Stallone show. Is that Sylvester Stallone or is that with, um, uh what's his name dances with wolves um god damn it you know what i'm talking about i think i have my shows mixed up uh tom hello yeah i like biotech jeff yeah definitely all right i want to share my screen now before i forget i'll get off into a tangent and um let's do that screen share and let's talk about the futures action okay so let's see where our poll is at again folks we have a poll up will the markets close up or down this wow a lot of bearishness out 75 percent of the people responding are saying it's going to be a down week this week interesting very interesting all right ah that's what I was trying to think about, Costner. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, Franklin. Thank you. Uh, all crypto influencers really, yeah. Yeah, a lot of big names, man. You know, I, I'll talk about it more in a little while, but there was just something so fishy about these guys. They're paying a lot of money. They were offering a lot of money. I never got involved with, with that stuff. Yes, Costa, thank you. Sly, Tulsa King, yeah. That looks that looks good. That looks good. I'm, I'm a big Sly fan. I, I love Costner as well. 
All right, let's get to it. Let's talk about uh, the futures action. Wow, we have a dip here in the S&Ps. No great shock. We had a, 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 a bear market rally last week. Very vicious. We are currently down a little over a third of a percentage point. Let's take a look at what we should be taking a look at, and that are the market drivers, yields. Uh, yields are still down below 4%. But they are moving up higher on this session by over a half percentage point. The U.S. dollar is gapping up higher. The key to remember is that the dollar is nearing support. So while this, this rally may fade, I think that we're going to get a dollar rally in the coming days. Now, I'm looking on the corner of my eye, the E-minis. They did a reversal bar. This is a five-minute chart. I want to know if we take out session lows. Because that means we have a five-minute reversal bar. It looks like we're going to. Okay. We're good. Now, the VIX is responding. The VIX is higher. On the session, all right, so everything is making sense. The, the whys behind the pullback are uh, the dollar rallying, yields rallying, and the fact that we were extended. Because if you take a look at the uh, – these are the micro E-minis. They're, they're fine. Uh, they look the same as the E-minis. Uh, we closed at really significant resistance on a weekly time frame last week. And what we may need to do, let's do a deeper dive here. We may need to come back down and retest 39.16, see if that holds. 39.50 was a bit of support last week. Looks like we have a little bit of a battle coming back here, back to the 15-minute chart. Now a five-minute chart. Yeah, they gapped it down below the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Uh, we may trade sideways here with a bias to the upside, but I think what's going to happen is, is that we're going to bear flag out and we're going to break the session lower lows. Moving on to the Russell 2000, it too is gapping down, down 0.41%. Doing the same thing here. We had gapped down, rallied back, and we are flirting with a continuation break to new lower lows. And again, folks, this is not horrendous. I mean, we, we had a heck of a rally last week. The NASDAQ. The NASDAQ down over a half percentage point. You can see here, we spoke about this on Friday, that there was a signal that we were getting a potential double top. Now, keep in mind, this is a five-minute chart. We're not day traders here. And now we have broken support. And it appears as though we may close there. We'll see. But again, it's only a five-minute chart. Let's not read too much into this, okay? All right, so that's equities. Let's take a look at currencies. Uh, we may have a five-minute break here. Looks like they're going to take out this last five-minute bar. If they do, we'll probably take out session lows pretty soon. In fact, let's uh, – I think I'm hyper-obsessing right now over this for no real reason. QQQ. 
Okay. Well, I shot it while dumbass. I always do that. At or below, Bob. Q, 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 lower. Okay. There we go. All right. So those are equities. Let's take a look at currencies. We know the dollar has moved up higher. And a very strong dollar tonight. Let's get off the five minute chart. Let's go to a 15 minute chart. Strong chart. Let's see what's driving the dollar. It's probably a combination of Euro and Yen. Uh, definitely the Euro easily uh, down uh, about spot four, 2%. Let's see how the Yen is holding up or breaking down. The, oh, wow, the Yen is really taking it on the chin. The Yen is down three, more than three quarters of a basis point now on the session. So this trend that began in earnest back here last Thursday, and this is when the dollar really fell out of bed, is now done. This is sending wedge triangle formation. That's in the rear view mirror. So the yen has, has a long way to go before it finds serious support. So it looks like this may carry through to tomorrow. Now, what, unfortunately, what that means is that while we had a great week last week with gold and the mining stocks and silver, that probably means that they're getting hurt right now as well. So let's take a look and see how they're doing. This is gold, and gold is down. Not horrible, but uh, it's down just shy of a quarter percentage point. As for silver, was that forward slash SL? I don't feel like looking for these symbols tonight. No. Uh, what's the symbol? Sorry, folks. I had this ready earlier. Um, here we go. SI, SI. Oh, silver really taking it on the chin here. Technically, uh, in terms of, um, in terms of, Percentage move, not horrible. This is a one-hour chart, but uh, we're testing a support level now. And if we break 21.50, the ounce, on silver, uh, we could fall considerably lower. So uh, right now we're in a holding pattern. We're, we're down fractionally. Maybe we'll rally back here. But really, this all goes back to the dollar. The dollar cannot be underestimated in its influence on silver and gold. So interesting week so far. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out was that getting ready for the show tonight, I took a look at um, some industrial metals. We haven't been paying attention to them. So, so let me bring up a chart of copper. And what I found was really startling and somewhat bullish for the global economy anyway, because copper is the canary in the coal mine for uh, global manufacturing, global uh, production. And copper has formed a beautiful base and last week, it broke through the pivot point of this W formation. So copper is in fuego right now. 
Way too much salt this weekend. Drinking water hand over fist. So copper looking really strong. Can we divine anything into that? Well, I, I, I would think that it's globally bullish. And I would say China's reopening. I've sort of seen some articles, and then I heard that one of their provinces is now on martial law. So you never know with the Chinese. Uh, what else was looking good last week? Steel. I brought up U.S. Steel. They're looking really good. Looks like we made a continuation higher. Similar uh, W formation forming here, although no um, breakout above the pivot point like copper did. So the industrial model is looking interesting. Let's bring up uh, Bitcoin. We're going to talk about Bitcoin in a moment. Not really Bitcoin. The exchange is more so. Bitcoin now down 2%. Folks, I'm continuing to dollar cost averaging into uh, Bitcoin. I do it every Monday. Not a large amount, very small amount. But this is what bottoms are made of. So we can go down another 5,000 points. You know, it's, it's okay. I'm, I, I hope it does. We're just going to keep dollar cost averaging in. Taking a look really quick at the agriculture names. And I want to take a look at energy. None of my symbols saved here. It has been ticked off. Okay. Wheat. What wheat broke down last week. This looked like it was going to break out. Uh, it did not. It broke down. Wheat is broken. That is good. If you're worried about food inflation being the proximate cause of the Federal Reserve driving up rates, well, wheat's telling you, you know, don't worry too much. It looks like prices are going to be coming in here some. Uh, let's take a look at corn. Corn breaking down as well. This is last week's price action, not this week. So that's in the rearview mirror. That chart is broken. Let's check out soybeans. I like to go with the weekly view because we don't watch these all the time. So the weekly view gets, allows me to catch up. Now, soybeans are looking strong. Soybeans want to go higher. Very nice. Now, going back to... 15-minute chart. Let's take a look at energy. Now, I'm going to warn about um, energy stocks going into the new trading week. The energy sector last week was salvaged by, uh, God damn it, by uh, that rally in equities overall. But the if you take a look at the daily chart of the XLE, that's the uh, energy ETF, that had broken a rising wedge formation. And if we didn't get salvaged by that CPI report, I think there would have been a lot more damage done. Light, sweet, crude, rising at current. Oil closed down on week. And usually, XLE and oil trade in tandem. Very highly correlated. Not gas. You know, be careful of these gaps up on natural gas. The daily stokes, weekly stokes are declining, trading down below 50. What happens when you get that? Rallies tend to fade. And that's exactly what we saw last week. We saw a massive rally uh, last week, and then it just faded. So be careful. I think it was last Sunday night when we went live, and natural gas was ripping. Yeah, right here. Look at how this faded. Go to some comments. Uh, Falcon, 
Bob, have you ever gone through a period where you're consistently on the wrong side of trades, long and short? If so, how did you kick it? Yeah, so it, whenever I've been on the wrong side of a trade consistently, uh, the problem has been in here. Uh, usually it's your position sizing is way too big and you become emotional or your brokerage starts getting involved with your trade saying, hey, listen, you're too big here and you need to manage this or we're going to manage it for you. So position sizing is key. Go to half of what you were trading at. So that way you get the, any emotion whatsoever out of it. Once you start getting consistent again with your trading, then you could go back to what you were doing. And if you keep a journal of, or even if you go back and you, and you write down the reasons of as to why you got into the trade and then why you got in trouble, that's invaluable. Uh, many times it's going to come down to uh, position sizing resulting in uh, impulsive behavior. So long story short, those two behaviors – Failure to position size appropriately and impulsive behavior. And this is why I always say wait until the final hour of trade to make a decision. Usually when I break that rule, which is fairly frequent, uh, I pay for it. Uh, it, it. It's a rule for a reason. So reevaluate what you were doing wrong by just go back, uh, keep your trading journal, uh, analyze it, see what the, the themes are. Paper trade if you want. If you have think assume, you can paper trade and just get that confidence back. Confidence is key. It's so critical. And just to get back to, you know, there are a lot of guys on YouTube that, that claim to be gurus. Now, I'm no guru, all right? I'm fallible like anybody else, and so is everybody else. Don't beat yourself up. If you made a couple of bad trades, lick your wounds and move on. You get no value out of uh, continuing to kick yourself, man. Just move on. Just want, learn your lesson. That's all. Elon Musk, noise aside, what is the Tesla chart telling us? We'll, I'll, I'll go over uh, Tesla in the back half when we do uh, when we do uh, stock chart requests. If you can just remind me later on, folks, we have thirty five people on. If I can get thirty five likes, I'd appreciate it. And we have a poll going. And. It, it, oh, now it's leveled out. It's fit, only 56% believe that we're going to close lower on the week. So, please, if you haven't taken the poll yet, please do so. We have 15 likes. Let's get up, get that up to 35, please. Um, crypto community has low market psychology IQ. I'm not going there. I'll get in trouble. Uh, when sentiment is, is at all-time lows, fear is at all-time highs. True. Yes. And that's bullish, right? There's contrarians. We love that. Uh, they will buy the dip. ES has one more week to hit the upper chunk. Uh, yeah, I can go with that. Uh, will there be a capitulation on SPY, like sideways week? I I don't think that it'll be capitulation. I think that it'll be um, – it could be a sideways week. I don't think that we, we're going to see capitulation until next year. Unless, of course, the Federal Reserve does something or a geopolitical event happens. But we have not seen capitulation yet. And I'm measuring capitulation as VIX shooting up through 45 at a minimum. Uh, hey, Bob, Jim Cramer posted a picture of M&Ms for movie night. Inverse Cramer ETF says short candy. Yeah, he has not been on, on the good side of calls lately. Uh, I think copper inventories are very low. Okay. About, do you have a favorite leverage ETF? I use AGQ. Uh, we're long of it for disclaimer for disclosure purposes. Bob, Bitcoin is not the big fish; it's the technology behind it. It's the investment in the future. I'll be honest with you. I I, I need to do a lot more learning of cryptocurrencies. Life journals for trades, smart, smart. But the key is is going back and uh, and going back and evaluating, really doing the assessment. Like right now, I, I I'm working with this guy on a a chart. He charged me for it, not a chart, a uh, a tracking um, spreadsheet for options, and it's basically, you know, it helps you keep track of your profitability on rolling. Um, 
because your P&L can get skewed. You know, if you roll frequently, you could be making money, but your P&L is not reflecting all the rolls yet. So I'm working on uh, a spreadsheet to help resolve that. So I finally found a guy that looks pretty good. Ah, uh, thank you, Yogi Mac. I need, I need that reinforcement, positive reinforcement. Thank you, my friend. All right. Um, let's see how equities have settled down if they have. Silver's not positive. Let's see what the, go with the Q's. Q's fighting back, may fill the gap here. VIX coming off a bit, dollar coming off a bit, yields gapping up. Yields are moving up higher. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take you back to July 22nd, 2020, 2002. 2002. Uh, WorldCom files for largest bankruptcy ever. Now, the CEO at that time was Bernie Evers. Bernie Evers was on CNBC at least once or twice a month. It felt like he was on there every day, pumping, 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 pumping his company. Then, of course, you had Enron. And Enron was a big Ponzi scheme. And this is a, this is a clear, and they, went, they went bankrupt in 2021. Excuse me, 20, 2001, 2001. And what's old is new, Enron's liquidated to oversee FTX's massive cryptocurrency uh, bankruptcy. All right, so I titled this Sunday Night Live stream, My Exposure to uh, FTX, uh, BlockFi. I have had opportunities to... Uh, become an affiliate for these companies, and they were offering a lot of money, a lot of money. But if I don't know the product, I do not promote the product. So I never got involved. So to, just to make a long story short, there are a lot of guys out there right now, uh, Graham Stephan, who's a great a great YouTuber, really, really great. Uh, meet Kevin, another great guy. Uh, I, I like their their product. They put, up, they put together uh, good Good content. They're certainly bigger than me, but they they drank the Kool Aid. They 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 drank the Kool Aid. Uh, they have to own that. They they could have said no, like I did. When it, when a deal is a little bit too good, and you're dealing with an unknown, um, really just an unknown uh, company as big as it is, and and FTX had some big big backers. Uh, BlackRock was involved. Um, another big company was involved as well. I'm sure there were many. Uh, 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 what's his name from uh, Kevin O'Leary from uh, what's that show? Sharks, Shark Tank. Uh, he lost a bunch of money in there. Uh, you had um, Tom Brady. He lost a money, a lot of money there. So a lot of people got suckered in. Uh, but when the deal is too good, I've always known walk away walk away and i'm happy that we did so zero zero apologies that need to come from me with regard to these companies and what we're about to go through now there's a flip side to this the reason why i started off with worldcom and enron is because i've, I've been to the puppet show i've seen the strings and this is what happens when yields go higher, an old bull market dies, yields go higher. And as, as Warren Buffett always said, you'll know who's been swimming naked when the tide goes out and the tide is going out. And you have a lot of zombie companies and they are going bankrupt and it's not over yet. But the, in this are going to be great opportunities. And we already started to take advantage of one opportunity last week. So all of these companies, what set the stage for this sell-off in 2000, the, the 2000 bubble, were WorldCom, Enron, and a bunch of other ones, Pets.com. I could go on and on and on. Companies that had no reason to be in business other than 
They had a dot com after their name, and money was cheap. That all came to an end. But keep in mind, WorldCom filed for bankruptcy in 2002, Enron 2001. The bear market was already in its late stages by then. So in a way, you could, you could argue that the blow up at FTX and what appears to be, I, I, I have no knowledge of what's going on over at BlockFi, but when I pull up their website, BlockFi is not able to operate business as usual. This is their website. We have limited platform activity, including pausing client withdrawals as allowed under our terms. When you have a company going back to their terms of agreement, <laughs> you, got, you got a problem. You got a real problem. We request that clients not deposit to BlockFi wallet or interest accounts at this time. Click to see more. So this is how bear markets come to an end, folks. It's all a part of the process. And through that process, there are opportunities. And who are going to be the winners? Here's the landscape here. Binance is, well, I don't think they're publicly traded. If I'm wrong, I, I tried to look up the chart earlier. I just did a name search Binance. I don't think that they're publicly traded. I know Coinbase is. We initiated a position last week on Coinbase. We sold a strangle. Options are very, very expensive. And we also sold naked puts. on Coinbase. So in that sell-off, early morning sell-off, we began initiating a long position on Coinbase. So what's up for grabs here besides credibility? These companies that come through this, on the other side, once you have regulations, uh, they're going to be the dominant players. They have they became part of the process of leading the regulators through the process of establishing regulations. Therefore, they become the incumbent. Good luck on seeing them. Just like with Amazon. Amazon stock during the 2000 sell-off went to pennies. Uh, now it's a, a trillion-dollar company. So what's up for sale here? Binance, U.S. Coinbase, Curve in bidding war for BlockFi. So their credit card business. So there are opportunities out there. This is all part of the consolidation of the industry. And it's all very, very good stuff. Even if we have another blow up this week, there's going to be more blow ups. It's a good thing. You got to clean out the system and that out of the ashes rises the phoenix. Uh, okay, going to earnings really quick. Earnings season is over. For the most part, some takeaways here. The earnings season has not been for the faint-hearted. I'm an options trader. Yeah, I know that. Uh, we, we stopped doing uh, earnings trades on options. It was so bad. Uh, S and P 500 companies had their lowest share of profit beats since 2020. Estimates have started to come down, but they don't yet reflect the economic outlook and need to fall much further. So. The U.S. discretionary names, as of, I think about two or three weeks ago, their forward-looking EPS earnings growth was 14%. Think about that. 14% earnings growth, and there's only a couple of things wrong with that. I'm going to go to them in a moment. Besides the fact that I'm going to go out of sequence here, I promised myself I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. F. Oh, it's wrong. wrong. X O Y. Here's the discretionary names. This is one of the only sectors that last week, think about it, just last week, took out not only the October lows, but the June lows and closed there. I'm going to go to a chart in a few moments, and I'm going to tell you why I think that this is a bear market rally. And this is going to fail. It's going to fail horribly for at least the XLY. Certain sectors I like. The banking sectors come very, very far, very, very fast. I think we're going to correct there, but I think they're going to be okay. 
coming back. Some of the reasons why we're, we're 2023 is going to be a rough year. Uh, a sharp increase in energy profits and euro weakness meant European earnings held up far better than those in the U.S. and emerging markets. But the region region may be in in the region may be in for a shock soon. I can't speak. Analysts are always too positive, and this is the takeaway. I'm going to leave off with this. I don't want to bore everybody. Uh, whatever this guy's name is, Chief Investments uh, Officer, uh, HSBC, said the outlook for inflation and economic growth suggests no U.S. earnings growth for 2023. His analysts had projected, with analysts projecting 6% increase, estimates are still too optimistic, he said. So when we know that the analysts are still too optimistic, and that their projections need to come down. We need to say to ourselves, okay, where are we on a PE basis? Well, stocks are at current near 30 on a PE ratio, the show to PE ratio near 30. The mean is 16.99. Stocks are very expensive. And the Buffett indicator, as we go into the new trading week, is saying fairly valued but we know that we are far extended beyond the historical trend. So still overvalued relative to historical trend. So while I love the price action last week, we called the price action last week. And we did well last week. The problem is, is that in all probability, as you proceed into January, I don't believe that we're going to have a major sell-off. We may, for all I know. But I don't think we're going to have a major sell-off until the new year. Why? Seasonality is a major factor. This is a headline-driven market, and we know that the month of November up going back 12 years, a good amount of data up 83% of the times, December up 72% of the times on a weekly time frame, Last week was not a very seasonally strong week, yet we hammered it. We did very, very well. And this coming week is traditionally up, again, going back 12 years, up 64% of the time. The following week, which I believe this is Thanksgiving week, is up 82% of the time. And then it drifts off a little bit. But then the final week of the year is up a very strong. That's a very quiet week. It's computerized trade. And everybody's on their Lear jets heading over to Stad and over to Aspen to go skiing. And they just have the program set, make sure the market doesn't crash. I want to enjoy my eggnog and enjoy my mistress. So that's what is, is, is probably poised for the market as we proceed into the back half of the year. It's just the way it goes. Absent an event. Absent a big blow up. Absent the Federal Reserve coming out and peeing in everybody's Cheerios, pardon the, uh, I know this is a family-friendly show, but they they are quite possibly able to do that. And I think one of the reasons why they would uh, kind of throw water on this rally is that I think that the, 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 the media were way too friendly towards that uh, inflation number, that CPI number on Thursday, way too overly friendly. Inflation is still running rampant. Just because it ticked down, that means zero. Inflation has a tendency to go up, come down, trick everybody into believing that inflation is done, then all of a sudden it goes back up. So be careful. Don't get lured into the, the narrative of the media. They want you to buy stock. They want to provide liquidity for their investors who advertise on their networks. Comments. I thoroughly enjoyed that analogy, Bob. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, the average bear market is about 18 months. It's about 12 months. Of the, I think the market is close to about. Uh, yeah, and, 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 and you know what? I, I want to take a step back here, and I want to um, point out something. Is that, you know, going back to this chart here, I don't want to put too much on this chart 
Because what if this time, let's say you're right, and that we're 12 months into an 18-month cycle, let's say uh, six, uh, six months from now, we look the same or maybe even higher. But that doesn't, that doesn't mean that the business prospects for uh, businesses are not improving and their forward-looking guidance or their forward-looking um, expectations may make the stocks look relatively cheap while their current uh, TTM, their, 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 their trailing uh, PE multiples, look very, very expensive. So we need to be open-minded. We can't just look at this chart and say stocks are going to collapse, right? We need to take into consideration where we're at in the cycle, which is why I brought up Enron and WorldCom to draw a correlation or draw an analogy of uh, we've been here before and it's going to happen again. So let's not get too caught up with the charts. So you could be right. We're in an 18-month cycle. We're in the 12th month. So a fair point to make. Uh, hopefully Coinbase isn't going under. I I looked at the I did the research on it. They they put out a note that uh, they have a 15 million dollar uh, exposure, a deposit with FTX, and that's their limit of exposure. They are not they, you can't have a run on Coinbase because they're a publicly traded corporation and they are, they're, they're they're fully audited. So it's you can't have a run on Coinbase. Uh, Bob, do you have any theories on potential margin calls because of FTX? That that's why I brought up uh, Coinbase uh, to see if they had any A loans to FTX or whether they had money on deposit to FTX. They have no loans, and they had a $15 million uh, deposit with FTX, and that's their limit of exposure. So uh, that's all I know. George Gammon is not on board. Not on board with what, uh, TZ Gammon? TZ Burton, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's move on. I want to save some time here. A couple more minutes to go. This last article, Morgan Stanley 23, 2023 Outlook. It looks pretty good in terms of expectations. I think it's fairly accurate. Morgan Stanley 2023 Outlook, growth cools, bonds rule. All right, so yields have come up. If you get inflation that comes down, bonds can rally. That's a fair point. 2022 has been a horrible year for bonds. I would expect that bonds do fairly well going into next week. Now, one chart that we went over on, I think it was Thursday night, and that was HYG. That's high yield debt. I was bullish on the chart, and yeah, we gapped up. So I think that this is a, an area that we could look at. If you want to be more conservative, then uh, working in the high yield debt market or junk bond market. Look at uh, TLT, which also did well. HYG yielding 5%. Charts looking okay. So, yeah, they may move up higher going into 2023. Back to the article. I have a couple of issues with it, but overall, I. Okay, so the story is going to be weaker growth, less inflation, we hope, we hope, and the end of rate hikes. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that. A lot's got to happen on the inflation front to say there's not going to be any more rate hikes. Weaker growth is about continued deceleration of the global economy in 2022 to 2023. Agreed. Payback from excessive post-COVID consumer demand and bloated inventories in the retail sector. I have an issue with that. Keep in mind that Walmart, Target, two of the largest retailers out there have already had earnings blow up, not this quarter, last quarter. What did they do in response? They sold off their inventories. So we've already seen that. And that gives me some concern that if they're not going to increase inventories, they're going to go to just-in-time deliveries, keep lower inventories, and they'll be able to raise prices because they're not trying to unload stuff they're warehousing. So that's one concern. I deviate a bit here, but they may not be completely wrong. 
about the bloated inventories of some other uh, companies. But Target and Walmart have certainly delevered on their even inventories. Slower growth, growth could finally cool inflation, we hope. Inventories look increasingly elevated. I think this is old news. Inviting discounting on core goods. We've already seen this. We've already seen this. Target, Walmart. U.S. CPI is currently seven. This is this is a red herring. I talked about this on Thursday night. Go back. Thursday night, Futures Live, a Stock Charts Live. I said that that Bloomberg article on Zero Hedge, uh, two, two bips, two basis points lower from 7.9. Nine expected to 7.7 does not mean that the inflation in the U.S. economy has gone away. It's just less worse than what they expected. It's bad. It's very, very bad. And it's also outpacing wages. So this is, uh, I, I don't like when they do this. And you have to assume somebody's getting paid for this. But we forecast, it, I, I, don't, I don't believe this. We forecast that it will be, meaning inflation, under 2% by the end of next year. How is that going to happen? We need to have a collapse in energy prices. We need to have a collapse in food prices. They're taking cattle offline. You have 40% less cattle this year than you did two years ago. Remember the, the photos over in Kansas of, of thousands of dead cattle caused by heat last summer? Also, rents, they go by owner's equivalent rent. That's not a real survey of rents. It's, it's bogus. Uh, they, what they should be looking for is real rent increases. So I think that while I agree with a couple of points here, it's a little bit too pie in the sky in terms of inflation expectations. Here, U.S. real average weekly earnings. Folks, it peaked out back here, May of twenty. We were in an uptrend. We are in a bear market on real average hourly earnings. Remember, back here, we had inflation that was below 2%, and wages were rising. So in real terms, not nominal terms, real terms, you had wages increasing. Now you have wages decreasing and inflation moving up higher. So real wages are negative. And that's why you saw stocks rally, because part of the CPI report was wages, and that came out lower than what they were expected. Stock, uh, Wall Street loves that, as sick and perverse as it is. And when you take a look at debt, housing debt, and non-housing debt, U.S. consumer, all-time record highs on both. At some point in time, these credit card companies are going to begin cutting lines of credit. It's going to happen. It happens every single cycle. Also a concern is, um, is China. Now, this article here is bullish on China. It looks like they're going to start spending more uh, of a rescue package. But I also read that they're locking down martial law in some of these uh, provinces. So... Lord knows what's going to happen over there. I think they're a non-issue. We are invested in emerging markets now, but ex-China. I don't want any anything to do with China. Let's do some chart requests. Folks, we're going to be using TrendSpider, the only sponsor we have and the only sponsor that uh, I would work with because I know the product. So... 35% discount code, help support them, help support me. And, of course, we are an affiliate. We do our business partners, so for full disclosure. 35% discount code, automated technical analysis. They have a seven-day free trial offer. I give it away free to our silver and gold level members. Uh, Tesla was asked by, I believe, Yoga Mac earlier. Oh, hold on a second. Back to George Gammon. I'm a, they uh, took him off of Twitter. I don't think he did anything wrong. I think somebody hacked his account. George Gavin said he is very cautious. Yeah, and so am I. I I'm not. I'm not going in buying hand over fist right now. I'm dollar cost averaging in. Literally fifty bucks a week. That's it. So uh, I'm hardly emotionally involved. So I'm kind of hoping for a further pullback so I can get more money for from for my dollar. And to be honest, it's actually a hundred dollars a week. So what I do is this. 
$50 goes directly into Bitcoin. Another 50 goes into a money market account. So that way, when I see that the, the capitulation bottom, I take that cash that's been building up in the money market account, and then I dump it into Bitcoin. But only when I see that it's bottomed out, we're beginning to break out to, to uh, uh, new higher highs, after putting in higher lows. We're not there yet. Uh, CEO of Binance, CZ started it all with one tweet and Twitter has been in fuego ever since. 99% of crypto uses Twitter now. No doubt in my mind. Okay. Uh, I love Chinese food. I, I, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, HYG, okay. LABU. Uh, can you give me a quick take on IND? Is that the Indonesia ETF? I think I was long of that. I was definitely long of Indonesia not too long ago. Uh, reminder, folks, if you could smash the like button, we have 38 people on. 38 likes would be great. And we also have a survey going on. Will the markets close higher or lower this coming week? At current, 52% of you say we will close lower on the week. Let us know. All right. Donna, Donna you're going you're to keep me here all night. <laughs> Stop slipping them in. All right. Let's go to Tesla. I'm going to log off promptly at uh, 7 o'clock. Okay. Uh, Tesla, avoid. 15-minute chart. We closed that resistance. Uh, let's go to a weekly chart. We were down on the week last week. We did close off the lows. We broke down last week on Tesla. There's support at 206.77. Tesla's a very expensive stock. So right now, I'm not loving this chart. We broke down. We closed. Uh, Yes, off the lows of the week, but we had a breakdown last week. I would avoid Tesla here, daily chart. You know, daily chart, we rallied off of, these are the automated trend lines, folks. If you're not familiar, click up a button, throw them back on. We bounced off of support on the 9th. I think this is a, a dead cap bounce. Might we rally up to 206.85, 207? If we fail to close above that mark, I think that we roll over on Tesla and we make lower lows. So, I would avoid Tesla here, and I was on a 15-minute chart when I opened this chart up, and you can see we have a lot of overhead supply immediately above. We closed just shy of it. I would be very careful here. I'd be a buyer on a close above 208, tight stop loss below that mark. I think Tesla goes lower. Um, HYG. Well, we already went over this. Um, HYG's high yield debt. We had a nice little run there. We gapped up higher. Uh, this is a 15 minute chart. Let's go to the weekly chart. See whether or not we're going to get a. I like the 15 minute chart. It looks like it's going to gap up higher again. But I don't. I don't want to get too wonky with a 15 minute chart. All right. So a weekly chart, bullish key reversal bar on the week. We do have a higher low, not the cleanest of charts. I think that the all clear signal fires off once we break out of this triangle formation on HYG. Another way to play this, another way to play this would be to allow for a retrace. I already have the alert set here. I believe that's still good. Yeah. I already have an alert. Oh, it expired. It expired.
you know, remember, this is still technically in a bear market. So backing and filling is not only healthy, it's expected. Even after a strong week last week, we don't want to we don't want to buy into the mainstream narrative. Uh, it was a good week, right? End of statement. What we need to start asking ourselves is this. Is the bear market over? The answer is clearly no. We're not here to sell hopium, right? We don't want to do that. We want to be we want to be very, very straightforward and let people know that A, we're not paid by anybody to endorse any type of a market message. And what you're seeing on the charts is what we expect to happen. Uh, word is wrong. So our alerts are set. I'm loving RSI. I'm loving the Stokes. They're hooking up. Daily chart we already looked at already. We gapped up. We're up and into resistance. If you wanted to scratch the itch, very small position. I wouldn't put on any more than 20% of your intended allotment now because I think you're going to get better opportunities. Randy, yeah, I'm not – I forgot to bring up the chart of earnings. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned this. Retailers, Walmart, Home Depot, though. Well, I'm taking a step back from doing earnings trades. Uh, the the it, when, you, when you're selling premium, you're accepting undefined risk. And, you know, one bad trade can really, you know, destroy your, your quarter. So uh, we're taking a step back, being very, very uh, conscious of the current market conditions. Because I don't think... As I've gone over tonight, I don't think that analysts have, have, have brought their expectations down, and they need to do that. May, and the companies may just do it for them. So I don't want to be exposed to that right now. LABU. LABU, on, I, I went over this on the weekend commentary. I'm bullish on it. You know, All you need to do is take a look at the weekly chart here. Look at your Bollinger Bands, very tight and narrowing, love that. Uh, we held a breakout point last week, love that. RSI, higher lows now, higher highs. We broke out last week, LABU, bullish. Uh, Docu, DocuShot, I was going to trade uh, the options on last week, selling premium. But I went with Bitcoin, out of Bitcoin, Coinbase instead. Uh, DocuSign's looking good here. I think what you need, this is a weekly chart. You need a retrace and a retest of this breakout point at 45 bucks a share, 46 bucks a share. For those folks not familiar with what selling premium is, that means that if the options are expensive, I will sell puts. And that is a it's a bullish bet when you're selling them. You're not buying them. You're, you're, you're betting the stock will go up and the shares will not be assigned to you. But if they are assigned to you, you don't care. So you have to be bullish on the stock. Uh, you, you, what is that, Udemy? Oh, Unity. We went over this the other day. Um... Closed out the week very well. I think you, you, you're probably going to retrace on this one. Uh, get a retrace back down to 29 bucks a share. You can get along of it. Volume was very good last week. And on Thursday and Friday, you had a breakout daily time frame. On any pullback, you could look to uh, open a position here on Unity. This would be one. 
Now, if you if you like the stock, check and see how expensive the options are. If, they are. if there are options, I'm not sure if there are, and look to sell some out of the money puts. And you're just reducing your basis cost. Uh, nine. This one's left the. Uh, it's left the station. I don't think you could chase this one. It, it could still go higher. It's very strong. Volume is strong. We closed out the week. Well, we were higher. What was the higher of the week? Higher of the week was 1029. Where did we close? So you saw some profit taking on these shares last week. So be careful. There was profit taking. Ah, weekly, a monthly chart. We could be headed here. I didn't draw this line. I had no idea it existed. The algorithm. What did we do last week? We came a couple of pennies away from tapping it, and they sold into strength. Be very, very careful here, because if you own the shares and you're looking for a lot of upside, be careful. You have overhead supply up here at current at 10.72. What was the high of the week last week? 1029, not too far away. So be very, very careful with nine. Uh, no, I uh, no, I wouldn't. MSTR is is a, is a, has IV high IV because. They're, they're, they're so levered to Bitcoin. Uh, the, the options are expensive because people are out there betting the company is going to blow up. So um, I would not uh, sell premium on micro strategies. I would stay far, far away from it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a speculative bet that I would want to be a part of. So uh, they couldn't pay me enough to get involved with that company. Let's see what, how it's looking right now. Yeah, oh, I, I, I wouldn't touch this. It's correlated with Bitcoin. Bitcoin's under pressure. You know, their software business is a very, very good business. But, uh, you know, this is one of those companies where you, know, you can wake up one morning and, you know, they can have a margin call. And they're in big trouble. They're in big trouble. So I, I would avoid this one. Hi, Bob. What are your thoughts on Meta and OKTA? OK, okay Meta. I was looking at Meta last week. It's interesting to me. I think there's so much bad news in Meta right now. And they are making the investment in the, in the Metaverse. There's got to be something there. There's got to be some value there. They may not be realized for a few years. And as much as I can't stand Zuckerberg and these commies over in Silicon Valley, uh, where, when, whenever I see blood in the streets, like I see with Meta right now, I have to say, you know, put your put your personal opinions aside and, and make the decision of whether or not there's some opportunity. And I think that in terms of premium selling, I would definitely be a put seller here. I believe their options are still pretty pricey. I haven't looked. No, they came in. They came in. Current IV percentile, 42%. So they were higher. It's come in. So I would still sell premium if I wanted the stock, meaning I would sell uh, – the 110s, hoping to have the shares assigned to me. I wouldn't put on a big position, but you know, if you, if you wanted to get long of the position in the hopes that there's going to be something coming out of the metaverse in a few years, I think that this may be the time. I mean, you take a look at the monthly chart. We have an inside month so far. That doesn't mean it can't move lower. Last week, a very strong week, we broke out above a, a 
several support levels. You can see here uh, we bounced off of support as noted by the algorithm. And RSI broke out last week. Stokes are beginning to hook up. I think you have I think you have more upside potential here on Meta. Yeah, that's my take. I think it goes higher. Um, OKTA. Octa. Octa. I don't know this company. Apparently, I've looked at it before. That's my annotation there. Uh, I expected a bear flag setup to fail, and it did. So are there lower lows to be had here? I think we're done. I think we're done going down. This is a monthly chart, and we have, yes, put in new monthly lower lows, but they're holding support at 53.39. So this is now going to be the third consecutive month where we have held that support level. Weekly view. We broke support the week prior to last. We captured it last week. That's a reversal week. I think this could be bought. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now to possibly sell premium, to be honest with you. Okay, TA. low dollar stock. Ooh, current IV percentile, 90%. Damn. Yeah, the markets aren't too great here on the options market. These, these, the spreads are pretty wide. Members, we may do something on this this week, but I'm not liking the spreads here. The markets are very wide. You really want to sell premium on liquid options. So I love the IV percentile, but you, need, you also need liquidity, right? You need to be able to get out of the trade. Donnie, you're welcome, my friend. Franklin, thank you, Sean. Great having you. Have a great night. Uh, loaded up on Meta and Disney puts last week, expiring through three weeks. Is that too short? Are you long of the puts? I, I, I don't I don't buy the – if I'm going to buy puts, I like to go out past 45 days. Or even if I buy calls, I like to uh, go, go past 45 days because at that 45-day mark – your time decay really begins to ramp up. And, you know, going out a couple of weeks, that's – you're looking for – that's a lotto ticket. So I'm, I'm not in love with those types of trades. Uh, the only time I would buy the calls or buy the puts with only a couple of weeks left to go is a hedge on another position. You're welcome, Tim. Hey, folks, thanks for being here. Everybody have an awesome night. Hit the like button. And what would we leave off with our, with our poll – 55% believe the markets will not close up this week. Everybody have an awesome night. I'll talk to you soon. Have a profitable trading week. Be well.